Hello everyone and welcome back to the bee vlog. Today I'm going to be making these beeswax candles and I have a special offer for you where you can pick up some of these candles for yourself. So stay tuned later in the video where I go over that. I've shown in previous videos how I process the beeswax and filter it and get it ready for making into cosmetics or candles. And I've shown in another video how I make my own deodorant with that beeswax. So today we're going to be going over candle making. The first thing we need to do is get some wax ready on the stove and get it melting. And while that's melting, we're going to start to prep our molds. There's a huge variety of molds available for you to make candles with. I have three molds here. One is a skep beehive with some bees on it. Another is a small tree. And the third is a larger tree. Many of these molds are so detailed that they have to be split in order to get the candle out. So when you get your mold, yours may be like that, and the way to check is just to start pulling it apart, and if you see a split line form, that's normal, and you just split it all the way down the bottom to get it ready. This manufacturer also provides a pin in the hole that the wick goes through so that you can keep track of that hole, because once the pin is removed, sometimes that hole can disappear on you. So it's a good idea to keep track of that hole with the pin. We're going to be pulling a wick through this candle to get it ready to go. There's a variety of sizes of wicks, and the size of the, of the wick you use really depends on the size of the candle. I think it's more about the diameter of the candle. So you can just kind of experiment and try out different size wicks, or talk to your retail store and see if they have some recommendations for you. I don't remember what size this is. I bought it at the store and they basically told me this is the size I need for this size candle. Um, I should probably double check on what that size is. But in order to get this thick wick through this tiny hole, it takes a needle. Uh, usually it's recommended that you use a darning needle. And I know I have a darning needle somewhere in this house, I just can't seem to find it. So instead I made myself one using an old wire coat hanger. And I just put a bend in it at the end to create an eye. And I filed down the end so it has a little bit of a narrower tip to it. And to thread the needle, kind of flatten down the end of the wick a little bit by pinching it. Try to fit it through the flat eye of the needle. Sometimes it's easier to get a pair of pliers just to kind of crush that end. Then we locate the hole on the bottom of the mold. come in handy here too because it gets slippery. And now the mold is threaded. Leave the long end of the wick hanging out the bottom. Don't trim it because that is going to come in handy later. I'll show you that when we're done. But give yourself a good amount of wick at the top to work with. It doesn't have to be a whole lot but a couple inches is good. Then I made these wick holders that will sit on top of the mold and hold the wick in place centered in the candle like so. I'll show you how I made those. Again, taking another piece of wire coat hanger, I'm um, using about 8 inches here. If you have a larger diameter mold, you may need a little bit more. But for this size mold, I am using an 8 inch piece. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold it right in half. So find the center point and Bend it around. I want to close up that fold all the way. Get that as tight and as close together as possible. It's going to want to cross over on you. That's fine. We're going to 
work that out as we go. take the mold and I'm going to start getting some approximate dimensions off of it. We want to put a little bend down here about half inch up from the bent end so that that will be one leg of this tripod. Only has to be about a 45 degree bend, not too far. You can bend it more later. We're just trying to get some eyeball sizes here. The idea what we're going for is this part is since it's holding the wick we want it to be centered on the candle and then the point that the legs come off we want to take it from past the middle point of the bottom of the candle so if you're looking at it from the top the tines of this fork are coming up and I'm going to bend it right about here just past the center point into three legs of a tripod further you go past center the better we want to make it come to a peak at the top some people will use bobby pins that lie flat on the top here but that to me really gets in the way of the wax so I wanted to make something that sticks up above the wax because the wax you're going to pour it until it's flush and slightly domed over the top of the mold here. As you do this, you want to make sure that this part here stays centered and that you're not bending or deforming the mold in any way. I think that's good. Now you can see that when I pull this wick up a little bit more, give myself a couple inches to work with, lay this on top, I can pull the wick inside there and get it centered and it holds the wick in place so it doesn't fall to the side. Because this mold is a split design, in order to keep that from coming apart during the molding process, it needs to be rubber banded. So I put a rubber band about halfway down and then another one up towards the top. Making sure that everything lines up there. Then I can put the wick back into the holder, centering the wick. Now here's a little trick. Because the wick is sticking out the bottom, it causes this mold to sit un uneven and unlevel. You want this to be level so that you don't get an uneven bottom here. So what I do is I just put a little loop in the bottom of the wick and let it sit on that so it acts as a better base and it's more stable and doesn't rock around. So we'll do that to all three molds and get them ready for the wax. Some people will use a silicone mold release. This is to help the wax release from the mold as you take it out. I'm not sure it's really necessary it might help a little bit in keeping the molds clean. Some people will use cooking spray, but that's an oil base and it can make a mess. I think it could also start to break down these molds. So using a silicone base is probably safer for the rubber and also uh, leaves less of a residue on the candles. You don't need much of this if you want to use it. Just a little spray will do. It does leave a little bit of a shine on the candle. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little bit of a shine there. So the less you use, the better, and reduces that shine. But if you like that shininess, then it's not gonna do any harm. Just give it a light 
spray. That's all it takes. Now this is a slow pour so you don't get air bubbles in there. Let me fill it all the way up to the top and then just a little bit more. So it creates a little bit of a dome. Turn this back to the stove. I have in this pot a little bit of water acting as a double boiler. Gotta make sure that this doesn't go dry. I think I need to add some water to it. And I've got the heat on the stove at the lowest setting. I don't want to boil this water, just want to make it hot to keep the hot wax melted. Now it's just a waiting game. The smaller candles will cool faster. Might take about an hour for this smaller one. These larger ones take a couple hours. You need to make sure it's completely cooled and set up before removing them from the mold. As the wax cools, it may start to sink in a little bit. And I don't recommend topping it off with hot wax. It'll cause a really weird looking bottom and it just makes a mess. So if you've filled it full enough, don't touch it and leave it alone. All right, one hour has passed and this mold is still quite warm. So it's got another hour to go. But this one is cooled and ready to be removed. The way that's done is first take that off, take all the rubber bands off. Then just start separating it. This one actually splits on two sides. And then this extra wick that I left on the top here allows us to easily pull it out. And there it goes. I like to leave about an inch on the top when I cut it. And that candle is nearly done. Just a little bit more work to do on it. But leave this threaded and you don't have to worry about re-threading the mold. It's ready for the next candle. For the bottom of the candle, Take a very sharp knife, I'm using an X-Acto blade, you can use any kind of knife you want, and just cut that even with the bottom. Be very careful not to cut yourself. And that's done. There's the candle. When you want to light these candles, you really don't want to light this much wick. So all you have to do is trim that down and leave about a quarter of an inch of the wick. Then it will light better. Well, this has been a really fun year in beekeeping, and this channel has grown quite a bit. And I want to thank you, the viewer, for being a big part of that. So in order to show my appreciation, I'm going to be giving away three candles. One person will be getting a skep, another will be getting a large tree, another will be getting a small tree. If you want to win one of these candles, leave a comment below and in the comment share with me one of your favorite Christmas traditions. And if you don't celebrate Christmas, just share any kind of family tradition that you have that you really like. One of mine is that when we open presents on Christmas morning, we all take turns going from the youngest to the oldest. And that way we all get to see what the other people are receiving as gifts. And that makes the gift giving and gift receiving a lot more fun. Also, if you would like to buy one of these candles, I will have them available for sale on my website. Go to thebeevlog.com slash shop. And to show my thanks to you, you can get a 50% discount at my shop. Just enter the promo code YouTube1 at checkout and you'll get half off of your order. This promo code will last until December the 25th or until supplies run out, whichever comes first. Thanks for watching and have a very Merry Christmas.